Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are finally out on the launch pad today with uh, a DN series rocket. This is our Tartaros uh, Kronos mission, which is the uh, winners by popular vote of the uh, mission to uh, land a uh, uncrewed probe on the uh, surface of Saturn's moon Titan. The doggos say hello also. I was, I was waiting for a relative inclination to get down to an appropriate level. It has reached that level, so we're going to go ahead and light these engines up. Ba-boom. And get these clamps off and get ourselves skyward. Uh, this is kind of a new iteration of the DN series uh, rockets. Oh, man. Apparently I messed around too much. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Anyway, the boosters have been up from 3 E1 Advanced to 4 E1 Advanced. They've also been... Uh, Expanded a little bit to uh, hold more fuel, deal with that extra thrust. Most of that comes at the expense that this is a J2 upper stage, our B upper stage, that is uh, a little bit heavier than the uh, HV upper stage and the DN1A. It was the A upper stage for this, it was the HV upper stage on the RA9. Uh, for those of you who remember a million years ago when we were still launching that old friend, Anyway, the big change to this, and the reason I'm uh, about three or four days behind the actual Saturn window, was having to retrofit this rocket, one, to make the uh, boosters a little bigger, and two, to attach or to replace uh, the two J2s that were uh, used to be down there with these HG3 series engines. Uh, these are the HG3 sea level variant. They have a much better ISP at uh, sea level. I think it's 360 at sea level. It's already gone up to 396 on our ascent here, which I should be paying much closer attention to. We've already drifted way off our node and we're going much faster um, than I would like for this angle. Oh, good for me, of course. <laughs> Talking and not flying the damn rocket. I can't do more than one thing at a time. Yeah, it's like walking and chewing bubblegum. Anyway, uh, right. <laughs> so the HD3 is kind of like a midway point between the J2S and the RS25, which we are a long way from getting the RS25. And uh, so it was suggested that I look for these engines when they were not in RP0. A lovely viewer decided to go ahead and make the config for them. Just, just using the J2 model, so I, it was nothing super intense. Um, just went off the specs uh, that are available online, and I think they're going to be a great improvement for the DN series as a whole. Um, I would like to start uh, making the changeover to these engines on as many flights as I can, ones that have not already been built, of course. Oh, that's the wrong way. Come on. I need to get that relative inclination down, so I'm sorry if I'm kind of scatterbrained and trying to pay attention to way too many things, and talk about these new engines, and I just, I don't think I have the mental capacity to do all of these things at once. I am actually not that talented. Turns out, I may have fooled some of you all this time. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, they're, like I said, uh, based on the J2, just much higher compression. I'm still working on getting test flight to recognize them and give them the relatively higher failure rate that something with the such a high compression chamber pressure would uh, warrant, but um, the window for this was now, and I thought I had it figured out. I don't. I was also working on the plume form. I don't think I have it quite right, but it's very hard to tell with these boosters in the way. So um, I'm just going to work on trying to hold this angle and get ourselves a good time to apoapsis. This is still a pretty heavy stage. I think that... Uh, it maybe should have gone up on the three engine variant of the DN series instead of the two engine variant, but uh, we're here now, so this is just what we're going to do. Alright, so we've got about two minutes until this stage burns out, seven minutes until, or two minutes until we hit uh, Apogee, seven and a half minutes until we reach our uh, the end of this stage. So hopefully we should be alright. Our apoapsis is already 140 kilometers. I'm okay with that, but we're probably going to have to maintain an above pitch just in case. So uh, I'm probably going to speed through the rest of this so that I can focus on what I'm actually doing, and maybe I'll give you guys a nice voiceover talking about these uh, HG3 engines that we're going to be uh, switching out for our J2s. 
Um, other than the side note that I did not switch the uh, transfer, the upper stage to a HG3, that is still a J2. Um, the rationale being as I didn't want to have all brand new engines responsible for the bulk of this since we only really get one and since retrofitting it cost all the time. Oh, thank God that was the actual fairing. I had a heart attack moment there for a second because uh, that isn't... Yeah, that is the J2. Okay, I think I, I did get the staging correct. Anyway, all right. We're going to speed through the rest of this. I will pick you guys up in just a bit. So, well, the uh, first thing you'll see me doing here is uh, getting the comms equipment set up and uh, starting to target some things here. Yep, and uh, locking the RCS tanks on uh, the orbiter itself and then realizing that I've been coming in uh, entirely too shallow and our uh, timed apoapsis is depleting much more rapidly than I would have liked. Um, this kind of turns out to be the crux of the mission and I end up having to waste a lot of Delta V. So as far as a proving grounds for the HG3 engine, uh, I did not do very well. Had I had a more optimized flight plan, I think it would have gone um, so, so much easier. Of course, I'm, I'm recording so the dogs have a party behind me. <laughs> they're, uh, they're good at that, aren't they? Anyway, <laughs> so, um, this is the f most amount of time warp, or, um, not time warp, this is the most <laughs> amount of, wow. It's the most amount of acceleration I can get out of this, uh, new editing software, uh, now operating in Sony Vegas. Thank you. Um, I do like it, though. It is easy to use, but that's not what you're here to hear me talk about. Right, so monitoring the things between our inclination, uh, the altitude, our time to apoapsis, and these HG3s, it proved to uh, overwhelm me quite a bit. And I completely screwed up this flight plan, but I will probably be discussing uh, a lot more of that later on. But uh, yeah, like I said, it's, this kind of failed as a proving ground because I screwed it up, not because the engines are bad. The engines are actually very, very good. Um, higher ISP at sea level, uh, ISP at orbit, at least for the sea level variant, is about the same as the J2S, but it gets off the ground with uh, much more fuel, which the difference might be a little bit more than marginal uh, in higher thrust. It's the vacuum engine that I'm curious to test, and I think the next flight of the DN series that goes up is going to carry both the HG3s on the launch stage and uh, an HG3 here for the transfer stage. So we will get that figured out and we'll give these engines a, uh, a good solid test and something that's uh, worth their proving ground. Anyway, here's back to old me. All right, 218 by 172. And uh, thanks to my absolutely terrible ascent path, we've got uh, about 5,500 meters per second left in our uh, transfer stage. Um, shouldn't be a, it's not mission killing, but it is um, less than I would have hoped, certainly. So we're gonna bring up our maneuver planner here in MechJib. There we go, transfer to another planet as soon as possible, create node. Create, yeah, oh, okay, well, remove all nodes. How about that? Do we, Saturn, unset target, yeah, okay, all right, come on, pork chop section then. We'll just let it compute. Whoa, that was an image, all right. There we go. Uh, lowest delta V, create node, 7.71. Wow. Yeah, well, all right. We're going for it. Um, I'm certain that there will have to be a mid-course correction to uh, adjust our inclination. But, yeah, of course, it's not going to tell me any of these things. 
that's just fine. Anyway, let's get ourselves angled in. Whoa, 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 368 days. No, 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 no. Remove all nodes as soon as possible. Anytime now, create node, there we go, 42 minutes. Much better. And 7.79, that's slightly more tolerable. All right, well, I'm gonna get us in the position for this burn and I will pick you guys up in just a second. All right, so we're oh, just about five minutes out from our node point and pointing well below the horizon, which is uh, making me a little nervous considering our altitude's only 175 kilometers or so, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and light this thing and get it underway. And if we have to pull back a little bit to avoid the atmosphere, then so be it. All right, our J2 is lit. I am going to just stand here on the H key and get as much available Delta V out of the stage as I possibly can. And uh, hopefully, yeah, we are stretching out our time to periapsis, so we'll just watch this periapsis figure and try to keep it above 140 best we can anyway. So let's just uh, try to focus there and in the node. And um, yeah, nothing really interesting to report here about this. We're going to Saturn. Woohoo! Hopefully we're going to Saturn. <laughs> I, I really hope we're going to go to Saturn. I'll be extra disappointed if we don't, although we'll probably have about uh, a kilometer and a half, upwards of two kilometers per second to make up on the orbiter itself, which will leave us uh, a little shy of our uh, target fuel goals. Not going to lie. It's a little disconcerting. But um, I think we can still make it work. It is just going to be very, very tight. And if you want something to blame for that, blame my absolutely horrendous ascent profile because, God, it was absolutely horrible. But for the first time that I've uh, ever flown this particular variant on two brand new engines, I should just be happy that it made it to space. So let's just be cool with that, all right? Please don't judge me so harshly. <laughs> All right, I'll pick you guys up in uh, just a second. All right, well, that's a solid Saturn encounter, and we're just gonna run with that. 
So let's uh, let's see what we bought, or not. There we go. Focus view. Uh, actually, a lot less terrible than I thought. Obviously, we want to come in uh, equatorially and a lot closer to Saturn. So we will be making a correction burn just as soon as it gives me a uh, inclination indicator, which I just don't think it's going to do. But uh, I I'm just going to pick a guesstimation spot there and uh, try to clean this up just a bit and uh, this is not reflective of our total uh, available delta V obviously I'm just gonna turn SAS off and lean RCS on uh, there's a tank that has not yet been uh, unlocked so um, <laughs> yeah that's not accurate is the core of what I was getting to with that so we're gonna hopefully have enough fuel to not only capture at Saturn but uh, tip ourselves in the direction of Titan there's the old girl oh boy I am possibly way way off this is super interesting so this node is obviously not at a uh, ascending or descending node by any stretch of the imagination. So I guess I should probably let MechJeb figure that out since it's not going to give me the said nodes. Although MechJeb has been notoriously uh, bad about uh, getting these things quite right. Lots of interesting moons we can fly past. This is going to be fantastic, but we have eyes on only one you sir set as target we'll just now I probably want to leave Saturn as the target for right now thanks for not letting me click on it oh no I do not want to add a maneuver node I want to target Saturn oh boy <laughs> I I really love how it does these things to me sometimes no big deal none whatsoever so all right we're gonna get back around to uh, plotting this mid-course correction I will probably do it uh, off camera a bit later so as to not bore you so completely but I will take this moment to enjoy that very pretty picture there we go <laughs> I, that's a good one. Uh, maybe, maybe just one more because I'm a, I'm a sucker for these things. Awesome. All right, but uh, that's gonna do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I'll see all of you in the next one. So uh, until then, see you later.